What is FizzBuzz? And does it actually remove candidates? Yes, it does remove candidates. So what is FizzBuzz, right? <clears throat> FizzBuzz is like, it's an example of a problem that is very easy to solve, right? You're literally, it's a litmus test for can this person actually do code? Can this person actually think about programming in a programmer way? So what is FizzBuzz? I want you to make a program that goes through the numbers one through 100 and prints them out. Uh, but if the number is divisible by three, I want you to print the word fizz. If the number is divisible by five, I want you to print the word buzz. And if the number is divisible by three and five, print fizz buzz. So the problem here, right? Naively, super simple. You can do it in like maybe seven lines of code without like thinking too hard about this. It's like four loop of a hundred print uh, if i divisible by three fizz if i divisible by five buzz else print number uh and you make sure that like th there's like formatting things where like fizz buzz had to be on the same line and blah 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 there's like some a lot of stuff in here usually you would even put like if divisible by three and five or you could just say divisible by 15 print fizz buzz at the very top and so you're just doing a loop and if statements that's it um but you would be surprised how many people I have like turned down from an interview who have somehow gotten through like phone screens who could talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk who either clam up or they can't talk or they don't know how. Uh, and they just bomb this part of the interview. And it's what you were saying in the previous answer where uh, like go through this list of, you know, go through these files and like print out a number or whatever. It's a Liptus test for programmers. And yes, it does actually remove candidates. Um, it's Okay, so I got a couple of funny stories about this one. So I remember the very first place I was looking to interview at, they were talking about this. And I remember thinking in my head, this was so easy. And I start running my mouth about it. But it's just enough of a challenge that you have to think about it. And I think that's the whole goal of it, right? It's not super hard, but it's just enough so that you have to like put in the thought process to go, okay, so what order I want my if to go through which one Notice first. how I did it out of order. Yes. <laughs> but, Sorry, go ahead. But I was going to say, as long as the result works, right? That's all that matters. And the other thing you can do is you can talk about it. So when you're actually telling people and they go, okay, walk me through this problem, you can explain every part of it. You know, the funny story I have is I remember one of the places I worked at, somebody who had a computer science degree showed up. They're super nervous in their interview. And they asked them to just whiteboard this problem. And he could not figure anything out. And they were like, okay, okay, just take a couple minutes, chill out, you know, like let him like get some water or something, come back. For whatever reason, he could not figure out this problem. And the thing about it is it's a simple problem, but you do a ton of this stuff when you're actually programming, like all the time. And I can't tell you how many bugs of other people's, of course, not mine, where they have written if or in C sharp, like switch statements, and they've written them in the wrong order. So it falls through to the first one or falls through incorrectly. And so it's kind of a fundamental skill, even though it's such a like a super easy problem. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying like this, it, it, it honestly, whenever I give this problem, I'm not even looking for correctness of whether or not it will compile, especially if you do it on a whiteboard. I never write code on a whiteboard. I'm not expecting the other people. <laughs> but if I give you an IDE, uh huh that kind of auto formats or it like it does has like the linter or whatever the, the closer you get to actual work the better the the better of a solution i'm expecting uh but like if we're talking like at a whiteboard level like i'm i don't care if you forget that like you need to put like a colon or something right so like i'm i'm looking for pseudocode um so it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as i can understand what you're trying to think um mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. And, and honestly, when you're writing code in the real world, you never write. Like I remember in school, they taught us pseudocode and I see its importance. And maybe sometimes in comments, I write pseudocode, but like either you write code or you talk about it and that's about it. You never, do you write pseudocode? Do you sit down and go, okay, if I do this, I do this, this, or do you just write it or what? Uh, I only write pseudo, I don't write pseudocode. I draw like diagrams. I draw like uh, flow charts of like, if this, or if that or else this and then that way i could like visually represent it but i don't write like pseudocode because if i was going to write pseudocode i would rather just pull up an ide and start typing so that points so, up an interesting question on this one 
would it work in an interview where you have a piece of paper or a whiteboard if you were to draw that out first? Yeah, have you no, seen? Dude- I would totally accept it. Yeah, if you drew it out first, because then you'd be able to write the pseudocode super easy. So that would also be one thing to take away from this is feel free to draw a little diagram or a picture of flowchart. And then from there, you could write your code. Because, I mean, that's kind of how it works in the real world anyway. Yeah, I would totally accept that as an answer. 